Today, we will be talking about volunteering abroad um, in Tanzania, South Africa, and Costa Rica. Now, my name is Anne Shuley, I'm from IVHQ, and we have over 300 projects in 40 plus destinations around the world. So we're focusing on these three today because our lovely program managers have actually just returned from visiting them. So they can give you some firsthand uh, information, all the questions that you tend to ask, um, and just give you some really um, cool tips and tricks just from their visit. So, um, so you'll be able to see them on your screen now. Um, we have Mariana joining us and Lena from uh, New Plymouth and I'm based in Auckland at the moment. So um, yeah, uh, ladies, if you would like to unmute yourselves just so that we can um, so let's get things off and then yeah so today on the agenda we'll obviously cover uh, each of these three destinations um so lena and mariana will talk about you know the accommodation what the local team is like the different projects that we have on offer and if you have any questions during this time please feel free to put it in the chat and we'll have some q a um, time at the end of each um part so that you, we can answer those questions for you um and then at the end, we will cover off uh, fees and how you can apply and join one of these programs. Um, so let's get right into it and start off with South Africa. Mariana, over to you. Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, so I've just come back from South Africa and Tanzania that we're going to talk about later. But just uh, introducing South Africa first, um, it's valid to remind um to remember sorry that uh we have other destinations in south africa also in kruger and table view which is also based in cape town but i've just visited uh, the one we we've got based uh, in cape town musenberg um so just a brief introdu uh, introduction about cape town cape town is just such a beautiful city uh, it's a big city, very modern. Um, it's located really between the mountain and the sea, so the landscape is really stunning. Um, however, it's a city of contrasts. Uh, really, uh, pretty much everywhere uh, you're gonna note uh, notice the social and racial uh, segregation they've got that. Uh, for example, at the same time, you've got um, very nice, uh, and wealthy suburb just next door you've got uh, like a poor kind of um, suburb um, where which they called um, townships um, in these townships uh, it's valid to to remember that was a result uh, in the times of apartheid and right after as well uh, so it's really um, underdeveloped developed and racially uh, segregated communities and you're going to find more like non-white people there like black um, africans and um, colored and indians and so on um yeah so in musenberg uh, it's where the our program is based at so musenberg is in the south of cape town it's about uh, 30 minute drive to from the city center. Um, it's a beautiful and small coast, uh, coastal town. Um, it's a surf town as well. The surf is always up in, in Musenberg and um, it's just like full of live uh, restaurants, cafes. Uh, it's a very enjoyable um, town like to to go for a stroll and really enjoy the beach um, pretty much. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, in terms of the accommodation and the local team, I had the pleasure um, to meet the local team in Musenberg. They are amazing. I could really see, like, uh, confirm actually that they do a amazing job um so they are a family-run organization and they are quite small team um and they are very like close um close-knit team um all the volunteers um i just wanted to say like the the team provides like great support like from airport pickup um until like uh, uh transporting volunteers to and from their accommodation uh, pretty much every day. 
to their placement, sorry. So they, they are taken uh, from the accommodation at the volunteer house and uh, driven to um, the, their placement and back um, every day. It's just to ensure safety, uh, which is really cool. Not many other projects, programs you're gonna find that. Um, yes, yeah, so all volunteers stay in a large volunteer house and uh, we can have up to 42 volunteers at a time. So we've got quite a large capacity there. Um, the rooms are separated by gender. So it's more like a dormitory uh, style uh, accommodation. Uh, but the good news is that we are um, trying and we're working on um, arranging a private room um, there uh, shortly. And the good thing is that 5G Wi-Fi, which is very <laughs> helpful, especially in Africa. Um, yeah, so in in Cape Town, we've got five different projects. We've got childcare, uh, where you're going to work with children aged from two to six years old in daycares and uh, pre preschool. Um, uh, our placements are based in townships, so they are, these are very poor areas, so they really need help there. Um, we've got teaching and sports. These two are kind of, uh, they typically are based in the same school. Um, uh, at the moment, the local team is only working with one placement, and it's also uh, based in a, in a, in a township. And it's valid to remember that all these placements in, in, news, uh, in so the houses based in Musenberg, but all the placements, all these townships are based like, like up to 15 minute drive to the accommodation, which is like a very quick ride, uh, which is very helpful. Um, we also have the surf outreach, which is a very unique project. Uh, you're just gonna find uh, dedicated project for surfing in Cape Town. And we also have an animal care where you can help like um, to feed and treat and care for dogs and cats in the shelters to get them to help uh, to get them adopted. Uh, oh yeah, so there are a lot of free time and activities for you to do there. Um, there are a lot of, so it's a coastal uh, Cape Town. It's, there are so many bays around Cape Town with, uh, due to the geographical location, so many peninsulas. So you're gonna find like many stunning beaches. There are lots of wineries uh, because of the weather there. Uh, a lot of restaurants, cafes. Um, there's a tour that I did myself when I was there. It was the Cape Peninsula and the Penguin Colony, which is really nice as well. Um, of course, you have to visit the Table Mountain and get the gondola and go up there. Or if you are fit enough and like some adventure, you can just hike, which I didn't. Um, <laughs> we, we also have the Robin Island, uh, which is... Um, very interesting like you can learn more about the the story about mandela uh he got he stayed like 27 years uh on a prison uh, based on that island so you can visit there and of course south africa the only thing the first thing that comes to mind it's safaris so um there are a few um wildlife uh, reserves that you can go and do a game uh, game um, game drive and it's about two to four hours away from from Cape Town and yeah that's pretty much it I would like to share about South Africa did you have a uh, favorite free time activity that you did while you were there sorry we cannot hear did you have a favorite Free time activity. Yeah, can you repeat that? Oh, surely we couldn't hear here. That's okay. I'll try again. Um, did you have a favorite free time activity that you did while you were there? 
Oh, I just had time, so I went just for a short time. I just did the Cape Peninsula and the Penguin Colony, which took me the full day. It was a nice sunny day, um, but I've been to Cape Town before, mm -hmm. and I've been to the wineries and uh, Robin Island, which I found very, very interesting. I think like you've got time to do everything, even if you spend uh, maybe a week there because you've got lots of free time in the afternoon and weekends are off. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of fit everything even on during uh, weekdays. Perfect. And um, people can sign up when they arrive at the uh, program, right? To do yeah. these extra So that's how it is at the moment. Uh, we don't offer add-ons uh, on this particular program, mm -hmm. uh, but the local team, they've got a uh, local tour operator, they recommend it, so I've tried them myself, they're very safe, reliable, the guides are great, um, so volunteers, they just arrive and at the orientation, they can plan things together and they just book directly with the tour operator. Okay. Perfect. Easy. Um, okay, so we'll also start talking about Tanzania now. Mariana, you were lucky enough to actually visit Tanzania just after your South African trip, weren't you? I know. <laughs> yes, um, awesome. And I like I can now really understand why volunteers love um, Tanzania, and it's one of our most popular programs uh, here at IVHQ. It's one of our top three and definitely the top uh, one in Africa. So it was really nice to see what the local team um, does on the ground and they do a, a great job. Um, yes, yeah, so um, Arusha, um, they call it the safari capital of Tanzania. It's just because it's really the getaway to all the national parks they've got um, in the surroundings, like the Serengeti, the Tarangiri, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that, um, <laughs> and also the um, uh, Kilimanjaro, the Mount Kilimanjaro, so that's where everybody needs to fly into to get to um, Kilimanjaro. And um, I found it's a very bustling uh, city, uh, with chaotic traffic uh, where nobody really um, wears seat belts, no helmets when driving motorbikes. Um, yes, so it's really a skill to drive in, in, in Tanzania. <laughs> So yeah, we don't do that. I leave that uh, for the drivers. Um, um, there are markets, there are lots of markets, including Maasai markets, um, pretty much everywhere. We visit um, a couple of them and they are really nice. Um, but just uh, like to, if you're going, if you're planning to go to Tanzania, just keep in mind that you need um, to bargain everything so there's no set price for anything uh, so you need to um bargain which i'm not very good on it probably i paid a lot of money for some stuff that i shouldn't anyway <laughs> and, and it's valid to remember that tanzania russia anyways although russia is one of the most uh, developed um cities in Tanzania, you're going to find, you're going to see like high levels of poverty and living conditions. There are like very high percentage of the population living um, uh, below the uh, poverty line. Uh, and about the accommodation and the local team, I fell in love with the local team. They treat me like I was a VIP. <laughs> I really love that. They, uh, they were really expecting um, our visit, um, especially after COVID, no one has been there. So it was really nice. They were very grateful um, to have um, myself like representing IVHQ. Um, uh, on the ground and getting to know everyone. Uh, so uh, the, we've been running this particular program for 14 years and we always uh, 
it's always been with this local team so we've got a long uh, term uh, partnership partnership with them and they really treat you like family they treat the volunteers like family we all become a, like a very big family um with the mamas with the drivers uh it's and uh, the the local coordinators as well so they are just um uh, amazing and it really becomes your home away from home so you, you will be very well um, looked after um, and there we've got volunteers staying in volunteer houses and homestays so we've got this option in Tanzania which is really great um, we've got three volunteer houses at the moment all the accommodations are based in Sakina which is a suburb uh around the north part of arusha so it's about uh, an hour and a half drive uh, from kilimanjaro airport and 20 minutes away from arusha domestic airport so you've got two options to fly to and then and um you're going to be picked up from there so the volunteer houses they are uh, same as the um, in cape town dorm style uh, room separated by gender and the homestays are the same uh, but the good thing is that at, in the homestay if if you go in a more uh, quiet um, time of the year uh, we can try to uh, organize a private room for example for couples for mature volunteers uh, those who are seeking for a more um, quiet, quieter environment um, and so on. And my highlight was the food they prepare there is just so diverse, so amazing. We got to eat fresh fruits pretty much every day. Um, so there was really a highlight for me. The food is just yum and everybody loves it. Uh, we've got, we currently have eight um, projects on offer um we've got child care with lots of placements we have around 20 different placements all over um, uh, arusha and volunteers can work with children like from babies until six years old in daycares preschools and so on uh, we've got teaching uh, where you can teach uh, or assist with the uh, assist local teachers um, in private and govern governmental schools um, and the children are, are typically aged from seven to 12 years old so they're they're a bit older um, and to me, like visiting the placements, of course, I could not visit them all, but I visit uh, many of them. And in every single one, I was so welcome. Like, I was like, they are so um, nice and um, very caring. Like the, the placements really love like having um, our volunteers there. They, they are very grateful for our volunteers and the kids are just like full of love um, they come and hug you and they are so polite they really love school they cherish they cherish school um i was amazed to see like how they behave they are very well behaved um but they are too many so <laughs> it's um it's hard work and we also have women's education there uh, where volunteers can help um, to empower local women. Um, we, it was very interesting to see um, a daughter, a 17-year-old daughter and her father volunteering together in this uh, particular project, which was very nice. And um, um, the, the dad was a doctor and they pretty much they taught the local women about the human body like uh, lungs and heart so it was very interesting to see a male um, in this scenario as well and such a young um, girl um, teaching the local women so that was really nice they really enjoyed and the local women were very interested um, in learning which is really nice um, we also have animal welfare there we're gonna uh, mostly uh, work and uh, treat and care for uh, 
farm animals and domestic animals. Um, this particular project involves a lot of driving. Uh, it's a full day. There are lots of work to do because you also do outreaches. So you visit different places within the community. Um, so you actually go to people's farms and houses to treat their, um, their livestock or domestic animals, or whatever. And uh, we also have a medical project there. Um, all the projects are based in hospitals or healthcare centers. Of course, you have to have qualifications for that. Um, and you get to do, depending on your qualification, of course, you have the opportunity to do quite a lot of hands-on work, which is really nice. And also we do outreaches there, which where you can get even more opportunity to do hands-on work. And the volunteers were there, they just love it. So it was really nice. Uh, we also have the construction and renovation, so different projects can happen at different times. Uh, at the time I was there, we had this team, the volunteers were uh, renovating the whole building in this school. Um, so it was really nice to see how much they've accomplished in a couple of weeks, and they still had like two more weeks to go. Um, they did needed to do some fundraising to achieve what they wanted because they want to uh, redo the whole ceiling in the classroom uh, so the, they did a lot so they did it they needed extra money for that so they just um gave like they just made some fundraising which was really helpful and the school was so happy the principal was so happy with everything um they were doing there and the last one um was the Maasai Immersion, which is quite a new project for us. I opened the one in the beginning of this year and it's going really well. And I fell in love with that um, program myself because I met the local um, community leader uh, in this Maasai community. Um, the Maasai, the program is based in Makuyuni village, which is a two hour drive from Arusha. So it's quite in a remote place. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind. And um, it's a very unique and uh, special program. And you're going to work and live on site. Um, so we've got a set duration of two weeks for that one. And of course, you can always, if you want to extend that and spend more time in Tanzania, you can always uh, combine with a project in Russia. And what we do that like you would um, like support a, a rural Maasai community uh, while really having an authentic um, cultural experience. Uh, you really immerse yourself and then you can uh, you can help with many, many tasks. It's very diverse. You can do agriculture, construction, teaching. They've got a school there, uh, pre and primary school. Um, you can do farming and, and so on. And the accommodation they've got there, it's very super luxury, which is really nice. So they, um, they have like kind of these replicas um, of uh, their traditional hut uh, where they sleep and live uh, so they recreate that um, with the like that was built um, with the purpose to receive tourists to receive volunteers uh, to help them them financially support um, this underserved community and and it's uh, working really well at the time we've got 12 uh only 12 volunteers can stay there at the same time but they are building more pomas and it, we are really hoping to send more volunteers there they they are, are really in need and it's pretty awesome and in terms of free time activities there's also lots to do i don't think you can do everything in a month you need to stay longer there are a lot of safaris um and you've got like depending on the time in your budget in your availability and budget we've got one two three and four day safaris that take you to different reserves including the serengeti so if you want to go to the serengeti you need uh, longer uh, availability at least 
uh, for days. Uh, you can do Maasai Village, so there are cultural tours. You can climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, we've got uh, other hikes like in Mount Meru that is just outside of Russia. We've got Moshi Trip where you can um, visit the Moshi, Moshi Village, which is the last um, village uh, with the borders of the um, uh, Kilimanjaro National Park. Um, there's lots of nightlife, believe me or not, <laughs> which is really nice. Restaurants and bars, volunteers really have fun at night um, and they love it. Um, this program is very social and um, the best part is that the tours are operated by the local team. And so they, it's very reliable and safety. You're not going to book um, your tours with a random uh, safari company, tour company, which there are so many there. Uh, so that's ensure uh, volunteer safety as well. Yeah, that's it for me. Perfect. That was a great um, summary. Thank you, Mariana. Um, we've had a few questions come through. Um, so let's let's have a few minutes to cover some of them off. Um, so, so Diane's asked what type of animals will we work with? So I think this must be for the animal care project. Do you want to sort of touch on that? Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so animal welfare, we are going to work with domestic um, animals uh, like dogs and cats. And uh, so we get them ready and treated, uh, vaccinated, and like get really get them ready for adoption, find a home for them. Um, and, and we also have farm animals. So we've got chicken, we've got donkeys, we've got cows and goats. Wow, that's a, that's a that's a large variety of different animals. That's yeah. Cool. So and then you're gonna be accompanied, like overseen by a vet, and I've met him myself, and he's just um, um, amazing guy. So volunteers would be more supporting in a supporting capacity, oh, right? 100%. Yeah, helping um, clean and take the care. whole day, and they are gonna learn a lot. If you are looking for diversity, mm. you're gonna find on this. Uh, particular project. <laughs> cool. Um, so another question was around if the city, um, I think they're talking about Arusha, Tanzania, is safe to walk around in? It depends when and mm -hmm. where, like everybody else in everybody, uh, everywhere else in the world pretty much. So uh, of course at their orientation, the local team will do a safety briefing like what you should do, what you should avoid, places you shouldn't go by yourself. But the rule, the main rule is you're not going to walk by yourself at night. Mm. You can walk uh, by yourself during the day, which I did, but there's no such thing as personal space. Everybody will come and talk to you. Um, Tanz Tanzanian people, they love to greet. It doesn't matter if they know you or not, yeah. you know? <laughs> so it's going to be... Um, and you have to learn some basic Swahili, which the local team will teach you in, at the orientation, um, because you're going to say mambo uh, 100 times a day, <laughs> which is really nice. They're very welcoming. Uh, I didn't feel unsafe. Uh, I asked around, volunteers didn't feel unsafe either. As long as you follow the local team's roles, um, you will be fine. Perfect. Um, and Another question we've had is, uh, can someone do the medical project and also go to the Maasai village? Um, you, yeah, so you can split your time um, on the program. Uh, so as I said, the Maasai uh, project, we've got a minimum, uh, a set a fixed uh, duration of two weeks. So mm -hmm. you have to be there for two weeks, right? But it, then you can, after that or before that, do your medical pro, uh, project in Arusha. That's completely fine. You can do for as little as uh, a week, if you like. So you can combine both. Um, uh, another, another option is to join the medical medical project and uh, maybe book a tour, book uh, the Maasai tour. We've got half day and full day. So that's a way for you to um, to know about the Maasai culture and traditions. Um, but yeah, 
Mm -hmm. And um, we've also had a question uh, asking specifically about the childcare uh, project. What does sort of a day in the life look like um, for a childcare volunteer? What do they look like? Yeah, okay. So um, in Tanzania, volunteers work only on weekdays. They've got weekends off and child care. The child care centers, most of them, they're open uh, only in the morning. Others are open uh, for the full day. So depending on where you're placed, um, you can work full day or just in the morning. But typically volunteers uh, choose to work only in the morning. So a day would start around, like you get to your placement around 8, 8.30, you leave by 1. Mm -hmm. Okay, So you've got uh, the whole afternoon off, so you come back to the volunteer house or the home state to have lunch, and then you've got the afternoon free to do whatever you like. Perfect. Um, and we'll just get one final question. Um, we've had one around the accommodation so uh will it be sharing with other people on the same program or is it a mix of people doing different programs in tanzania okay so um you can be with only uh it's not like stipulated uh, it really depends uh you might end up uh, being in a room with only uh, other volunteers is doing child care you're doing child care it, it might be just a coincidence it's not uh, the rooms are not allocated the houses are not allocated like that mm -hmm. so in the house in the homestay you're going to meet people from all projects which is really nice and very often uh, we have volunteers doing childcare, for example, and they learn about the women's education and they want to go and visit and do outreach in, um, in the afternoon and it's completely possible. And so um, it's, it's mixed. Okay. Awesome. Um, and uh, actually we will just do one more question. So somebody's asked how much time um, before the, they want to start a program, should they be applying? How far in advance? Yeah, I would say the earlier the better, just because uh, I'm sure you don't want to miss out. So capacity is limited. Um, and Tanzania, as I mentioned, it's one of our most popular programs. For example, this year, 2023, June, July, August, we reached capacity and we still had lots of uh, volunteers wanting to go and I had to turn them down. Mm -hmm. And they are already booking for June, July, 2024. So I would recommend starting now. Yeah, fair enough, especially if they want to go around those sort of summer, really popular months, right? The sooner the better. Yeah, and it's also like uh, the earlier the better you, you book, um, you can start preparing for your trip. So mm. you can book your flights, the chances are higher for you to get a better deal on mm. flights. And uh, we know that flights are um, the biggest cost of a trip. So yeah, yeah I would recommend getting to that early. And does Tanzania have to be for three weeks? What's the sort of volunteer duration um, that people can choose from? Oh, they can choose from one up to 16 weeks. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility with that, right? Very flexible, but uh, typically volunteers, they stay, I would say between two and six weeks. Mm -hmm. But then oh, yeah. when they get there, they extend, they always extend. They always extend so much, right? right? <laughs> Um, so if, if anyone has any further questions, please um, feel free to email our team and we'll definitely pass you on to the right people or just straight um, apply for uh, the program that you're interested in um, and we can sort of go from there and you, the, the, one of the program managers would be happy to answer um, the question, any questions uh, that you have. So we'll go on to the next part, which is Costa Rica. So Lena, you were um, lucky enough to visit Costa Rica recently um, and I will just pass it over to you to sort of start talking about your trip. Okay, lovely. Thank you to everyone joining us today. Um, I came back maybe a couple of weeks ago from Costa Rica. Uh, I'm missing the lovely weather we had there. Uh, right now in New Zealand it's quite cold. Um, I had the chance to visit all the locations of the project, pretty much all of them. Uh, first was San Jose, which is the capital of the country. So it's the main cultural hub of the country as well. You'll find all the museums and all the 
all the important places in terms of history of the country are going to be there in the city. Um, it's the biggest city in the country, which may not be huge if you compare it with one of your big cities at home, but it's the biggest in the country. So it will have big city problems like traffic, like uh, a degree of crime, which is expected in any big city as well. So that's for you to um, take into account if you're traveling there. It's fast paced, it's a capital. So yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, I love the weather. I thought it was really, really pleasant uh, when I visited uh, in early August. There are two different seasons in the country. It's a tropics, so we, they don't really have like four seasons. It's rather a dry season and a rainy season, so you can expect more rain in the in the winter, in the winter, to say it in some way. Uh, we have a very experienced local team in there, and we've been partnering with them since 2009. So we have a really, really close relationship with them. They are super organized. Their operation is super impressive. Um, they they are really nice and welcoming, friendly. So. Um, they are available to provide support whenever you need. It's a really multicultural team as well. So you got people from everywhere in the world, not just Latin America and not only Costa Ricans. We got a team of um, South Africans, um, United States. Um, we also have people from other places in Central America, like Nicaragua. So you'll find a mix of everything in there. Um, they have an awesome office there. Um, they also offer lots of free time activities that you need to pay for. They run a dancing class, so they teach volunteers how to how to dance salsa or bachata. And they have an amazing instructor at the moment. She she's absolutely awesome. And you also can join their cooking lessons, so you'll learn how to cook one of their national dishes. Um, so that, that's lovely from them. Oh, and if you want to join one of their football matches, you can do so as well. Um, they also run the Spanish lessons for our volunteers. So they, um, they offer a discounted price for our volunteers. So you can let us know if you'd like to join us before you go to the country so we can book those for you. And the accommodation there is at local families' homestays, which is one of the highlights of San Jose, basically because you get the chance to be immersed in the local culture right away at your accommodation. You get to sit down with the family, even if you don't speak much Spanish, um, you can really feel how welcoming they are. They are super affectionate, really try to make you feel as comfortable as they can um, welcome you as part of the family for during your stay. And they will be doing your, Two of your meals is going to be your breakfast and your dinner. So you'll also have the chance to try local food, typical food from Costa Rica. Mm. In the home we have shared rooms. So you can expect to be sharing with other volunteers of the same gender. It would be around six um, other volunteers. Um, but we also have the option of private rooms that you can purchase as an upgrade. Um, in San Jose, we have tons of projects available. There are many, many placements all over San Jose and neighboring areas of San Jose. Uh, I had the chance to visit um, animal care placements, uh, child care placements, and construction and renovation placements when I was there. Oh, and special needs as well. Uh, for animal care, we got um, two types of placement mainly. One of them is focused on dogs and cats. So basically, you'll be helping at shelters just to rehabilitate these animals that they take from the streets and make sure they are back on their good health so they can um, get ready for adoption. Um, the one I visited works with horse therapy. So it's a very special product because it has like a double purpose. Uh, you are helping to rehabilitate animals, but at the same time, these horses there are used for horse therapy, which basically uh, is used for people with special needs, so help them overcome any physical and psychological challenges they may have. So it's it's really cool because it's a it's a double purpose again. And um, yeah, they really need the help of volunteers because they are usually underfunded, um, understaffed as well. So so it's really great to see that they 
can really use the help of our volunteers there. In terms of child care, um, our placements are usually based at after school programs, which again have the same problem as the animal care um, placements. They are understaffed, under resourced, so they could really use an extra hand to handle all the kids they have. Uh, the one I visited um, had like 280 kids. Um, and basically it's like the safe space that the kids get after their school. They are usually based in rough neighborhoods in Costa Rica. So um, they have a family background that is not so nice. It's not a great environment to grow up in. So these programs really offer them like a safe space, something different from what they see at home. And they can just go there and be kids and just enjoy their time after school there. For construction and renovation, we visited a really special placement that is now building houses for, for single mothers. So they provide free housing for the single mother and their kids. They also put the mom through school, through university, so she can stay there for the five years of her career. The kids are taken care of, their meals are taken care of, so it's a wonderful program our volunteers are helping with. It's been running for many years now, so they, all the um, complex in there has been built by volunteers with donated materials, with recycled materials, so it's quite a huge initiative that has a lot of impact in the community. And apart from that, we also have dentistry, healthcare projects. We have a very special holiday experience project that runs during Christmas. And it's a mix of different projects. So you're gonna be visiting a different placement every day. Our special needs projects. And we had the chance to run our summer camp for teenagers this July. It's gonna be running from for two, for three weeks during the summer, during July. And it's going to take place both in San Jose and a second location we got in, in Costa Rica, which is called Manuel Antonio. And the final one we got in this list is eco agriculture. That's actually not based in San Jose itself. It's four hours away in the highlands of Costa Rica. Um, and volunteers in there help a community based farms raising their, their coffee plantations and doing the whole process of. of organic processing of the coffee they pick in there. Well, free time activities in Costa Rica. Um, the great thing about Costa Rica, I think, is that it's it's fairly small, so you can do a lot in a little amount of time. And if you're based in San Jose, you can pack a lot of activities in one single week, for example. So if you want to stay within the city, there's tons of museums and interesting places to see in the city center. Um, there's also tons of nightlife and restaurants you can visit, but um, I would say that the highlight of San Jose is just going a bit out of San Jose, actually. Uh, is the many volcanoes they have around the city. There's waterfall visits, um, coffee farms for you to learn how the, the coffee is processed, and of course, tasting it afterwards. Costa Rica has amazing coffee, it's delicious. And there's also some nature and adventure activities such as zip lining and visits of wildlife reserves. Um, let's remember that being in the tropics, they have this amazing biodiversity. So wildlife reserves definitely needs to be on your list of things to do. You get to see tons of animals, slots, um, tropical birds. Slots are the main highlight of Costa Rica. You'll see them everywhere. Okay. On to our second location in Costa Rica. This is Manuel Antonio. Um, Manuel Antonio is around four hours or so from San Jose, depending on traffic again. Let's remember San Jose has awful traffic sometimes, um, but it will be roughly four hours from there. Um, it's based on the Pacific coast of the country. So you can expect it to be hot, tropical, it gets humid, but you also have the beach like right at your doorstep, which is fantastic. And um, of course, being so beautiful, um, it's a tourist hotspot, so you can expect to see tourists from everywhere in there. You'll see that you um, that US dollars are widely accepted all over Manuel Antonio. You can uh, use USD to pay pretty much everywhere, almost everywhere. Um, 
and it's really easy to get around. It's a small town. There's only one bus that goes from Manuel Antonio and back to Kepos, which is the main town. So there's there's no way that you would get lost. Um, that said, it's important to to know that the placements are not only Manuel Antonio itself. You're expected to help the wider community and the neighboring areas of Manuel Antonio. So um, it's going to take a bit longer for you to reach your volunteer placement there. Yep. So in the local team, um, we have Manuel Antonio locals mostly. So these people have been bred and raised there in Manuel Antonio. They know everything about the town. Everyone in town knows them too. Uh, so they they have all this knowledge that you can use at your advantage if you need to, to know anything about it. They have a lovely office space there. You get a, an awesome sea view. You can you, you can take your Spanish lessons there, looking at the sea, it's wonderful, it's beautiful. And uh, they also offer the same free activities that our San Jose office uses, uh, which is the dancing lessons. They also run a cooking lesson once a week. And accommodation also is at homestays or at a volunteer house. We split our volunteers in ages. So basically if our volunteer is 18 years old to 27 years old, they go to the volunteer house. And if they are 27 years old or older, they go to the home stays. Also, we welcome volunteers that are under age in this, in this project. So if you're from 16 years and up, 16 years and 17 years old, we uh, place them at home stays just on their own as a safety measure for our underage volunteers. Um, you can expect shared rooms. We can also organize private rooms if you need them. So um, that can be done as an upgrade. And in Manuel Antonio, we got animal care projects, childcare. We also have healthcare, teaching English, and the summer camp. Uh, I was mentioning before, the second week happens in Manuel Antonio. Yep. So in regards to healthcare, um, I want to highlight this because Manuel Antonio won't ask you to have any previous experiences or be studying to be uh, qualified to join the project. You can join as long as you're 18 years old and you'll be able to participate in this project. And in terms of free time activities, there's tons to do. Uh, um, again, like you have the sea at your doorstep. There's also the Manuel Antonio National Park, which is the main highlight of the town. It's a beautiful um, rainforest park. I was there for just one afternoon and I saw tons of things, tons of animals, slots, toucans, um, hummingbirds. You get to see everything out of the water and inside the water, like life is booming there. It's beautiful. You got um, plenty of beaches good nightlife, good restaurants to eat in, and a very good diversity as well as I saw it. Mm, what else? Um, boat tours are great. And if you go during season, you get to see, you get to do some whale watching as well while you're on the boats. Um, of course, there are some snorkeling, scuba diving is also great. You get to surf as well, wide water rafting, waterfall, zip lining, you name it, they have it all. <laughs> Okay, and on to the final location I visited was a turtle conservation uh, placement. This one was based uh, at the opposite of Manuel Antonio. So Manuel Antonio is in the Pacific. This one was in the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica. And we have four different placements for turtle conservation. One of them is in the Caribbean and the rest is in the Pacific and the Nicoya Peninsula. Um, basically, these are based in very remote and basic villages, um, not very inhabited. Um, the village I visited was like 500 people or so, so everyone knows everyone. It's really slow paced, really chill, so you really need to adjust your clock to be on island time. It's not usual for people to be on time all the time. They are just chilled. So we recommend our volunteers to chill as well, relax a bit. and just enjoy the slow pace of the village. It tends to be really hot and humid too, just like Manuel Antonio, so that's one thing to take into account. Um, the project involves a lot of physical work and it's gonna be hot as well. And just reminding you, it's, it's remote, it's basic, 
it's it's humble accommodation and villages are humble uh, many of them don't have paved roads there's no cars um there's maybe a few motorcycles and a quad bike that's what you'll find there and so again accommodation you can expect it to be basic comfortable enough you'll have a fan we um recommend you bring a mosquito net because there's a lot of insects there's tons of them you'll find everything in between mosquitoes spiders yeah grasshoppers they're all there so keep that in mind it's normal you're in the middle of the rainforest the jungle next to the sea it's it's completely normal and the great thing about the local teams in these villages is that the conservation efforts are community-led initiatives so um there was a cultural shift um in the past these villages used to eat turtle meat used to eat the eggs as well and poach them to sell them so since the project started uh, you can see that the whole village is now dedicated to turtle conservation and that has allowed turtles to thrive again um, some of them will have a biologist on site so someone who can really teach you a bit more can tell you how the conservation efforts are going and can tell you like that the projects indeed have a result on the conservation of the turtles and you can expect of course traditional food um basically in costa rica you have lots of rice and beans in every meal lots of plantains lots of carbs a few proteins and a few vegetables but it's mainly rice and beans in every single meal and again since you're in a remote village there is no wi-fi available most of the time so what we recommend you to do is just get a local SIM card so you can get in touch with your family back home. And in terms of what you're going to do as a volunteer, the main activity there is going to be your night patrol, which can last from two to four hours, either starting at 8 p.m. or at midnight. And what you do there is just basically walk around the beach uh, when it's dark just to try to find the, the turtles laying eggs. And at the moment, the, the guide who's doing the patrol will decide if he wants to relocate the X for, um, for the project to monitor or if they are going to mark the nest so they can monitor it back later at the original location. They'll be counting the X, they will be tagging the turtle if it doesn't have a tag. They will be measuring it as well just for to get this data into a database um, so they know how they're doing. Other activities include um, just digging up nests that didn't hatch and classifying the bad eggs. Sometimes they get bacteria or fungus inside, so um, that helps um, building the knowledge base towards conservation and making sure this doesn't happen for future nests. Uh, what else do you expect to be in there? Um, hatchery building, surveillance. They surveil the hatchery 24 hours a day during season release hatchlings, which is the most exciting part. And um, one of the highlights of my trip was being able to release the hatchlings into the ocean. And there's also another component of this project, which is doing some community service within the village. Let's remember that um, pretty much all their activities surround the conservation effort. So it's important for them also to be able to convey that message of conservation. So. We really appreciate when our volunteers help them with their English, help them uh, with beautification projects around the village. So that's super valuable for them as well. So indirectly, you're also contributing to conservation um, through community service. And free time activities, well, there's um, not like an organized um, tour option there. Many have community-led tours. So that will involve a local taking you in their boat just to do some wildlife spotting, something um, similar to that. You can visit some nearby wildlife reserves. In the Pacific, you'll have a chance to do some surfing and, and just to, these, to do some beach hopping as well. And within the village, they will offer you free cooking lessons. So when I was there, they were learning how to do empanadas um, filled with beans and cheese. So basically uh, taking the time to immerse yourself in the community is mostly what you will be doing there during your free time 
Awesome. Um, there's obviously so much you can do in Costa Rica, and it's really hard to sort of just try and condense it. We've done a really great job, um, Lena. I will just ask one or two questions that we've sort of um, had pop up, but then we really do need to start sort of wrapping it up. We've gone a little bit over time, but that's what happens when they're such cool programs. I mean, you can just talk, you can just keep talking about them until the cows come home, right? Um, so. <laughs> Well, uh, okay, so a couple of questions. The extra tour activities, are they only with IVHQ volunteers or are there other people that join them as well? Um, there could be others joining you, um, just because a tour operator also um, offers the tours outside, but mainly it would be with other IVHQ volunteers. Cool, and um, in terms of eligibility, are there any specific eligibility requirements? Um, obviously for medical and dentistry programs, there potentially might be, but what if you know somebody might have a disability or potential um, like weakness or something that they're not strong in because of something, an old disability, what are the sort of um, caveats around that? Um, we do welcome volunteers from all walks of life, so you, I just ask you to disclose that during your application so we can determine if the project is appropriate for you. Mm -hmm. uh, because it may not be comfortable for you given your specific situation. So we, if you can just let us know, we would be happy to advise. Perfect. But yeah, basically, um, some of them have age requirements. Um, for the turtle conservation project, you need to be 18 years or older. And if you're not, you need to be with someone who is and medical projects, of course, but other than that, we welcome everyone. So following up on the turtle conservation one, somebody's asked if it's a good option for a family volunteering, um, the, the person and their 10-year-old son. Is, is that an option for them? 18-year-old? Uh, 10. Oh, 10. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that one is a really tricky one, basically because of the night patrol schedule. So um, if your 10 year old is okay with, with waking up at midnight to go on a four hour walk on the beach, then you're welcome to apply. But it's important to keep that in mind. It's really, it's really hard. It gets hard. Mm. It's physical and it may not be appropriate for, for younger children due to that reason mainly. Okay, yeah, absolutely, fair enough. Um, now, if you guys have any other questions, please email them through to info at volunteerhq.org. Um, again, our team would be happy enough to answer any questions that you have. Um, so we'll just quickly cover off the fees, what you can expect um, to pay, and then how you can apply. Um, ladies. Yeah, I can do that. So um, there are two fees um, you need to pay to IVHQ. Um, the first fee is the registration fee. So after you apply, um, that's the next step. And the registration fee will secure your spot on the on the program you've chosen. Um, we'll cover your pre-departure support that uh, you're going to have like a dedicated uh, program manager like myself and Lena uh, to assist you through the process. Um, you're going to gain access to your pre-departure checklist and program guide and have some training. So that's going to be very helpful. Um, you also have, uh, ah, I just said that. Um, and then we've got the um, program fee, right? You know, which is yeah. the second fee um, you need to pay. So that one will be different from one program to the other. Re the registration fee is the same for all the programs. Uh, program fee is going to be starting at $24 per day for the South Africa program, $25 for Tanzania, and $32 for Costa Rica. And uh, basically, it includes your accommodation accommodation through the whole program. It includes uh, meals. In some cases, the three meals of the day or two of the meals. You'll need to check into your particular project to know which meals are included. Um, it will include an in-country program orientation done by our local team which basically covers all you need to know health and safety matters who to call if you if you need any assistance how your program is going to be how to take care of yourself while you're at the program how to get to places all that is going to be covered in the orientation it's also going to cover uh, all the logistics around your volunteer project how to organize it uh, it will offer you some discounts on language lessons and all the activity add-ons that we talked about, such as tours. It includes your airport pickup, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, you just need to let us know when you're arriving 
and we'll we will be organizing the report pickup for you. 24-7 support in case you have any issues while you're in the country or just need any assistance with anything. Our local team is going to be there supporting you. They are on the ground. They are in the country, so they are the best people to help you with anything you need. And these program fees also go directly to the local community that's going all to the accommodation and their meals. So it's a really important source of income for the projects and the communities that you saw during the whole presentation. And how will someone go about the application process if they're interested after this wonderful webinar? Yeah, so first thing you need to do is just make a decision on which program and project you like the most and go to the web page of that specific program and project and submit an application. There's a green button saying apply now for free or something among those lines. <laughs> Uh, again, application has no cost. You submit your application, we'll review it, and usually we'll get back to you within the next 24 hours um, um, telling you, yes, you're accepted, or these are a few alternatives in case you're not accepted. And the final step and most important is to secure your place. Um, just reminding you, spots are sometimes limited and we don't want you to miss out. So yes, that's basically it, pretty easy process. Yeah, I just want to highlight um, that uh, although you're choosing your program at that stage and duration and dates, it's valid to remember that we are very flexible. Um, so we can make any changes uh, for you guys uh, up to 14 days before your start date. Uh, if you want to change to another destination or change your duration or maybe split your program between uh, two projects, um, change your dates because you couldn't get uh, um, holidays, you know, uh, so it's all very flexible. Uh, you just need to let us know. Absolutely. And I think we have one of the best uh, flexible booking policies. So literally you can make any kind of changes up until 14 days before your departure date. Um, so if you're, if you're curious about, you know, if you're eligible or not and you have any questions, you can either email us at info at volunteerhq.org or as the ladies have mentioned, apply online. Um, there's a few basic questions that we ask you to sort of gather and then we'll be able to let you know within 24 to 48 hours whether you'll be eligible and you can go ahead or not. So thank you so much for joining us today, everybody who is online. Thank you, Lena and Mariana, for sharing your experiences. It looked like an amazing, amazing trip for the both of you. Um, and I'm very excited for it. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, everyone.